Hello friends, welcome to Input of Food Campus. So today in this video, we'll discuss about another very very important coding question, which is find the nth number whose prime factors are 1, 2, 3 or 5. So this is a very very important coding question because you know the prime factors is always important topics. So in most of the competitive exams or your on campus or off campus, these types of questions may be asked. So this question was also asked in this year in TCS and QD. Okay friends. So today we'll discuss about this problem and then write the code. Okay, so find nth number whose prime factors are 1, 2, 3 or 5. Okay, so you have to find the nth number whose prime factors are this. Okay, our first number is 1 and its prime factor is 1. Okay, so this one will be considered because it is the prime factor 1. So we'll consider that number whose prime factors includes only this 1 2 3 or 5 or all of these okay so our next number is 2 so its prime factor is its 1 and 2 and we can also write 2 so our next number is 3 and and its prime factors in 3 okay and our next number is 4 and its prime factors are 2 and 2 so its prime factor is 2 so our next number is 5 and its prime factor is 5 and our next number is 6 so its prime factor is 2 and 3 similarly our next okay similarly our next number is 7 so 7 its prime factors but you can see here 7 is not present here here only 1 2 3 and 5 so 7 will not be considered so our next number in this series will be 8 okay and its prime factors 2 so we'll write 2 and our next number is 9 and its prime factors 3 so we'll write only 3 here and our next number is 10. So what are the prime factors of it? So its prime factors are 2 and 5. Okay. So our next number is 11 and its prime factors is 1 and 11. So 11 is a prime number but here you can see here 11 is not present. So this will not be considered. So next number is 12 and its prime factors are 2, 3 so its prime factors are 2 and 3 so our next number is 13 so 13 is a prime number but it's not present here so we will not write 13 here in our series so next you can see 14 so the prime factors of 14 are 2, 7 so the prime factors of 14 are 2 and 7 but you can see here 7 is not present here so this number will not be considered so our next number is 15 and its prime factors are 3 and 5 okay 3 and 5 present here so this number will be considered so in this way we have to find the nth number whose prime factors includes this Okay, so if you are asked to find the sixth number in this series, so our sixth number will be this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So this 6 will be our sixth number. Okay, so if you are asked to find the seventh number whose prime factors are this, so the seventh number will be 8 because this is in the position 7 in our series. And similarly, if you are asked 10th number whose prime factors are this, so you can see here this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and this is 7, 8, 9, and 10. Our 10th number will be 12. Okay, so if our input is 10, then our output will be 12. Okay, so in this way we can calculate the nth number whose prime factors are this so hope you understand the question but how we will solve this question okay to solve this question so first we will take your range suppose 1 to 1000 
and in this range we'll check every number if it is divided by these two and then we'll check this number again if this is divided by these three and we'll check again if this is divided by this five and if so we'll store that number into an array okay so hope you understand the question and the efforts how we will solve this question okay so now let's write the code okay first write the basic format of the c plus plus that is as include iostream using namespace standard int main okay inside this main function i'm gonna write a variable suppose n and take the input from the user scene n and we want to calculate the nth number whose prime factors are 1 2 3 and 5 okay so right here function suppose the name of the function is prime factor and inside this pass this n okay so write the same function before this main method and write int n okay write an array here so array of n okay the size of the array a is n so now we'll write a for loop and this will be from 1 to 1000 okay so for int i equals to 1 i less than equals to 1000 and i plus plus and for every iteration we will store the value of i into another variable suppose num variable so int num equals to i okay so now we will check the condition using while loop while this num percentile 2 equals to 0 so if if the num is completely divided by 0 so we will divide this num equals to num divided by 2 so here you can see num percentile 2 so num percentile 2 equals to 0 means if you divide some numbers suppose here is 30 so 30 percentile 2 equals to 0 means that there will be no remainder that is it will be completely divided 30 will be completely divided by 2 okay so if the number is completely divided by 2 then we will divide it by 2 so next we'll write a while loop again to check the another condition that is while num percentile 3 is equals to 0 if so then num will be num divided by 3 okay so similarly we'll divide num percentile 5 so if num percentile 5 is equals to 0 if so we'll divide this num by num by 5 and store it into the num so after dividing it by 2 and then dividing it by 3 and then dividing it by 5 finally the number will be decreased to 1 that is if you are dividing a number so suppose here the num is 30 okay so suppose here the num is 30 so here you check if num percentile 2 equals to 0 yes 30 percentile 2 is 0 there is no reminder so we'll divide it by 2 so 30 by 2 will be stored into the num so 30 by 2 is equals to 15 so 15 will be stored into this num and again it will check num percentile 2 equals to 0 so 15 percentile 2 is not equals to 0 so this while loop will terminate and now we will check this while loop and our num value is now 15 so 15 percentile 3 equals to 0 so 15 percentile 3 equals to 0 so here our num is 15 15 percentile 3 equals to 0 and now we will divide this 15 by 3 so here will be 15 divided by 3 that is 3 5 are 15 so 5 and 5 will be stored into this num and here we will check again if this num that is this 5 percentile 3 equals to 0 no 
5 percentile 3 is not equal to 0 then this while loop will terminate and will go to this while loop and we will check here if this 5 so num is now the 5 so if this 5 percentile 5 equals to 0 yes 5 percentile 5 equals to 0 then we will divide this 5 by 5 so 5 divided by 5 will becomes 1 okay so 1 will be stored into this num and now we will check if 1 percentile 5 equals to 0 no 1 percentile 5 is not equals to 0 so now our num is 1 so now we will check if num is equals to 1 then we will store the value of i because our original value was i okay so 30 was here and we stored it into the num variable so we will store the value of i into the array this array and which position suppose j position and j's initial position is 0 okay so we will store this i into this j position of this array a and the position of j is 0 so initial position of j is 0 so let's write here the initial j value is 0 okay so this will be stored into the j and after storing it we will increase the position of j okay because we want to store the next value so we will increase this value after storing this value into this array of j so you can write this post increment after this like here j plus plus but you can also write it here okay now we'll check if array of n minus 1 if array of n minus 1 is equals to i that is the value in the array a in the position n minus 1 so array of n minus 1 is equals to the value i so if this is so then we'll go outside of this loop so just write here break okay finally we'll return array of n minus 1 so why we will return n minus 1 that is array of n minus 1 because you see here friends if you are given a number that is suppose 7 so if you are given n is 7 okay so if user gives here n equals to 7 that is the 7 position and here you can see our array starts from 0 that is the sixth index will be the 7 position that's why we have to return the array of n minus 1 and that will be the 7 position okay so this point is important and this point is also important that if array of n minus 1 is equals to i okay so hope you understand this so now we'll run this code and give some inputs here so see here friends now we will give suppose 6 and this will be gives our output 6 because this is the 6 position and this is the number in the array and this is the 7 position and the number is 8 and this is the 8 position and the number is 9 and this is the 9 position and the number is 10 and this is the 10 position and the number is 12 okay so now we'll check by giving 6 and then 7 and then 10 so let's see okay so give here 6 okay there is no output because okay we have to print here so for that write here see out okay let's run it okay give here 6 okay you can see here our output is 6 okay let's give you 7 7 so the 7 position is 8 okay so here you can see this is the 7 position and the 7 position number is 8 so if we give the position 10 our output will be 12 run it again and give it as 10 so the 10 position number is 12 okay friends so hope you understand this and i have tried to explain you in a very simple manner so if you find this video helpful then please like the video and share it with your friends and please subscribe this channel because it will be helpful for you and your upcoming examinations. So thank you for watching this video. See you in the next video. Till then take care.